often when we discuss true crime stories on this channel, the victims are strangers. At times, the victims are targeted based on specific prejudice, while at other times, it's purely done out of a desire to claim the lives of others. In today's story, the victims are the immediate family members of the murderer. I've just slaughtered my entire family. This is what 23-year-old Manaz Zanin posted on Discord, an online gaming community, after brutally murdering four of his family members in a nine-hour span. Manaz was brought up in a loving Bangladeshi family with high hopes for him. They brought him up and gave him a quality education to establish himself as a qualified engineer in Canada. But things turned wrong when Manaz failed college and lied to his family about attending university for his mechanical engineering degree. The story of Manaz revolves around lies, depression, and an unhealthy obsession with the online world. Welcome to another episode of Twisted Minds, where we uncover the most dangerous and ruthless minds worldwide, who leave us wondering why. Today, we will be uncovering the case of Manaz Zaman. Let's uncover what led him to commit such a horrendous crime. This episode is surely gonna send chills down your spine. Manaz Zaman was a perfect South Asian son. His mother, Mom Taz, was known for speaking in glowing terms about her son. As she said, Manaz was always well-behaved, always affectionate with his family, and a bright student. He was a golden boy with a bright future. Manaz's life with the Zam and family was filled with hard work and dedication. His father, Mani Ruz, was 59 years old, and his mother, Mom Taz, was 50. Both parents had emigrated from Bangladesh to Canada in search of opportunities and a better lifestyle for their future children. Living in Markham, Ontario, Mani Ruz established himself in a local taxi business. Besides his parents, other family members included his sister, Melisa, 21, and their grandmother, Firoza Begum, 70. His grandmother, Firoza, played a great role in raising the two children and ensuring they stayed true to their Bangladeshi roots. Belonging to a South Asian culture, Mani Raz ensured that his children were respectful of their heritage. His teachings emphasized strong work ethics and love for family. He was industrious, humble, and deeply devoted to his Muslim faith. Since childhood, Manaz and his sister were told how hard work and education are the two main foundations of success. Like so many people in Scarborough's growing Bangladeshi expat community, they had simple goals for their children. Give them good education so that they can get a good job. The good job will get them a good life. The Zaman family had the most perfect life when it comes to a South Asian family living in Canada. What can be better than two loving, well-behaved children who are on their way to becoming engineers and doctors? Many South Asian families can only dream of having such a life. According to Arif Soel, a close family friend, in our community, you have to be a doctor or an engineer. By 2019, Melissa was working part-time at a grocery store and studying to become a neurosurgeon. As for Manas, he was enrolled at York University and was already close to graduating as an engineer on the 28th of July, 2019. Or at least that's what his family believed. Zanam had, in fact, never started university at York. He had enrolled in a local college, but failed all of his classes. In fact, after a few quarters, back in 2015, he decided to drop out. No one knows the reason for his failure. He was neither involved in drugs, nor had any learning disability. Manaz's routine was to leave home daily, take the bus, and return home to share his stories regarding his academic progress at York University. To kill time when he was out, he found himself a quiet place to play the video games that he was obsessed with. He had no friends other than the ones he played with online. To blend in with normal students, he started walking at the local mall and later decided to work out at a gym. His family never suspected anything, nor did Zaman's behavior arouse any suspicion. He had hatched a great web of complex lies. Step by step, he made his way toward graduation, scheduled for July 28th. 
The possibility of a master's degree was even being discussed at family dinners. When his graduation was around the corner, there were already plans for celebrations and family gatherings. However, no one knew that Manaz Zaman led an unexpected double life with a huge secret. As graduation neared, Manaz devised a sinister plan so that his family would not find out. Manaz's parents frequently felt pride in creating a family that, despite not living in their country of origin, continued to respect their roots and the most important pillars of their society. Studying at university, following excellent work ethics, and respecting their elders. For his parents, Zaman was apparently studying mechanical engineering at York University. He was an obedient son who left for the university every morning, ended his homework, and everything seemed normal. In fact, his parents saw him as good and affectionate with his family and diligent with his studies. The young man maintained the lie for more than three years until the eve of graduation inevitably arrived. Zaman hadn't actually studied at York University at all. Instead, he enrolled at a local university, which he barely attended. So after a short time, he failed his classes. Finally, after some unsuccessful quarters, he decided to drop out of education. Eventually, the day came when Manaz would have to graduate, but evidently, he couldn't, and his family would discover his reality. Manaz couldn't allow his parents to discover the lie, so he devised a sinister plan. In 2019, he only had a short time until graduation, which worried him a lot, and he was afraid of being discovered by his parents. That's why he executed his plan. Kill every single family member. End of story. Or was it? It was 2019, graduation was approaching, and on the day before the ceremony at 3 p.m., he first murdered his mother by hitting her with a crowbar and slitting her throat with a kitchen knife. About an hour later, he continued with his grandmother, Firoza. He murdered her with the exact same method as he killed his mother, hitting her on the head with a crowbar and slitting her throat with a knife. The young man sat down to play video games after carrying out these two murders as if nothing bad had happened. He even took a nap and waited for his next victim to come home. This behavior is something that no one can comprehend. How did a respectful young guy suddenly turn into a vicious monster? Has it got something to do with him playing violent video games? Is it because of excessive pressure to succeed from his parents? Now it was time for his sister to come home from her part-time job at the grocery store. When Melisa came through the door, Manaz hit her on the head and also slit her throat. This murder was committed around midnight. An hour later, when his father returned home from work, he was also hit on the head. Like all the previous victims, his throat was slit using a kitchen knife. It is horrifying to think that Zaman was now in a house with the corpses of his entire family. Manaz was his parents' pride, but he brutally murdered his entire family to hide his double life. One would think that after this horrible event, the murderer in question would escape. But no, the young man confessed his crimes to his video game friends. I just killed my entire family, he wrote, saying that he would probably spend the rest of his life in jail. His online friends did not believe him. That's when he sent photos of the bodies and a selfie with a bloody knife to prove what he had done. It triggered international attempts to alert local authorities. Gonna kill my parents and go to jail, yo. This message was posted by Manaz on the 27th of July, 2019. He also posted a picture of a dead woman's body covered in blood with the message, this is my mom. After that, another image of an older dead woman was posted from his account, probably his grandmother whom he had just killed. He knew what was coming next. His next message gave a hint of him bidding farewell to his online community. I hope I made you laugh at one point or another. I hope you remember the good times. I will miss you all. When Manaz posted about murdering his family members, fellow users of the Discord server sprung into action. At first, 
Many of them thought he was seeking attention by posting pictures that he must have taken from some shock sites. But some other students got suspicious. John, a Discord user, was almost certain that the messages posted by Manaz were true. That's when Nicole, another Discord user and a criminal justice student with some knowledge of forensics, tried a reverse Google image search that resulted in no results. She tried to match the pictures with several other databases, but there was no alert. The pictures indeed belonged to Manaz. Once the murder was verified through the gruesome picture, the users searched for any identifying information that would lead them to Manaz's location. The story of how the online community helped the authorities track down Manaz's location has also been documented in a docu-series called Perfect World, A Deadly Game. It shows first-hand accounts from the community of online gamers. The people who had previously interacted with Manaz called him an extremely racist person. His online gaming account was suspended several times after he posted offensive comments and racist messages targeting Muslim people. According to one of his online friends named Nicole, everything that Manaz said was obscenely racist. One user, John, was almost certain that the messages were telling the truth. He sent the photos to a group of other contacts in an attempt to see whether they could be matched with any pre-existing images available online, which would have been a sign Manaz's messages were fabricated. Among John's contacts was Nicole, a criminal justice student with some knowledge of forensics. She had little doubt the injuries on the photo were real, not staged. But it's possible that these images could have been from the internet. A shock sight, she says in the documentary. They were probably taken by him. That's when it was like, this is the real deal. Our friend is a mass murderer. At this point, no one knew the person behind the Manaz account. They had no information about his location or his actual name. One member, Junior from Costa Rica, knew Manaz better than the others. When he tried to reach Manaz, he successfully got a reply back. This may upset you, but I did it. At this time, he had only killed his mother and grandmother. During all this time, he kept sending more disturbing messages to the Discord server. He threatened to do the same to his father and sister, who would come home in the next few hours. He was waiting for his father and sister. After multiple failed attempts to determine his location, they finally located his IP address after contacting a Discord server member based in St. Paul, Minnesota, who called the local police. Unfortunately, it was too late by then. Manaz had already murdered the rest of his family members as well. After tracing the IP address to the house, they found a man. He was still in the house next to the corpses. When the police arrived at the crime scene at 1006 Castlemore Avenue, they were immediately stunned by the brutal scene in the house. According to reports, the police found four bodies in the house, including three adult females and one adult male. Investigations revealed that the bodies had been left in the house for several hours. At the same time, the police also found a suspicious man at the house's front door and arrested him on the spot. The man then raised his hand and surrendered. On the morning of July 29th, the police announced that the 23-year-old man, whose full name is Manaz Zaman, had been charged with four counts of first-degree murder, an unforgivable crime. Four people from the same family were brutally killed, and the murderer was suspected to be the son of the family. A witness at the scene confirmed to a news reporter, we are almost certain that the victims are the mother, father, sister, and grandmother of the arrested suspect. However, York Regional Police said, until the coroner has fully confirmed the identity of the victim, we will not release any relevant information. Homicide detectives, the coroner, and the medical examiner were at the scene on Sunday night. Police said the crime scene was appalling and the investigation could take a long time. Police are not looking for any other suspects at this time. Once the autopsies were completed, it was revealed that all the victims were murdered in the same pattern. They were struck in the head with a crowbar-like instrument to knock them unconscious. After that, their throats were slit using a kitchen knife. According to the prosecutor, these were horrible, 
monstrous, brutal killings. They took place in the family home, a place of security and sanctity. Manaz Zaman pleaded guilty to three counts of first-degree murder involving his grandmother, father, and sister, and one count of second-degree murder involving his mother in September 2020. On the 2nd of November, the judge sentenced him to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for 40 years. This means that the golden son will have the opportunity to be free when he is 64 years old. The judge claimed that what was done was deeply disturbing and deserved severe punishment. Upon delivering Zaman's sentence from a Newmarket, Ontario court, Justice Michelle Forst had the following to say about Manaz. No right-thinking member of society would have seen any remote correlation between the imminent disclosure of the secret of Mr. Zaman's non-attendance at school and the vicious taking of the lives of the four people closest to him. Words such as brutal, cruel, cold, and callous do not begin to convey the enormity of his violence. Manaz Zaman always occupied a privileged place within his family. The 24-year-old, the son of a family that emigrated from Bangladesh to Canada, appeared to be a respectful, studious boy and was about to receive his engineering degree. However, the favorite son hid the fact that he was addicted to video games and had not advanced in his career at all. He possibly couldn't bear the pressure of telling his family that he had been lying about his education. His fear of failure led to him slaughtering his entire family in 2019. Sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, the sentence was announced at the beginning of 2021. Two months later, Zaman, who is at the Central East Correctional Center in Lindsay and faced sentencing in a virtual courtroom restricted by the coronavirus pandemic, took the opportunity to say a few words. During a sentencing hearing in October 2020, he told the court, I would like to just apologize to anyone I have impacted negatively with my actions, especially to the people who knew my family, friends, and loved ones who I know could have never seen something like this from me happening. I am sorry. The judge in charge described him as cruel, cold, and insensitive. In a message posted on Discord, it was later found out that he had acted because the date of his supposed graduation was approaching. It's been my plan for three years. Literally, told my parents my uni graduation was July 28th. I couldn't have delayed it any longer. I did this because I don't want my parents to feel the shame of having a son like me. I'm a pathetic coward and a subhuman. Since I'm an atheist, I believe there's no afterlife. So, I was scared to die. And I wanted them to die so that they didn't suffer, knowing how much of a pathetic subhuman I was. It's all very selfish. I'm just pathetic. The media later released photos of the suspect, Manaz Zanim's sister, father, mother, and grandmother. After his arrest, several individuals turned the electronic confession over to the authorities. Afnan Ali Bakis, Melissa Zaman's best friend, told the court, I never thought I would have to write a victim impact statement for my best friend's murder. I never thought she would be taken away from me like this. I thought the only time I would write a speech for her would be on her wedding day at some point in the future. But I guess that's off the table now. She added, I fear seeing Manaz. I fear what he may do as a free man. I have panicked several times in public since he committed the murder in fear of seeing him or when I see anyone who looks like him. I fear this pain and anxiety will never leave me. There have been many theories as to why Manaz turned into a monster. Why would a son who was brought up in such a loving family ultimately kill the very people who loved him? A number of blogs and articles have even tried to link this story with how an obsession with video games can lead to mass murders or grisly killings by increasing a person's aggressive thoughts, feelings, and behavior. From the message that Manaz gave at the court, 
We can see that he was ashamed to confront his family after seeing them happy about his graduation. All his life, his family gave him love. But, in return, the only thing that he gave them was a lie. Another important point to notice in his message was how he mentioned that he was an atheist. That means that he never believed in an afterlife. Due to his lack of faith and fear of hell, his guilt and shame felt more painful to him than murdering his family. According to his Discord messages, he suffered from depression and hence became an atheist and ultimately created this plan. Did his atheism and distance from God contribute to his state of mind and actions? The lack of faith and empathy was also proved by the messages from his online friends. He got his account suspended several times due to racist and offensive messages. Considering that he was an ex-Muslim who belonged to a Muslim family, most of his hateful comments targeted Muslim communities. Factors like hatred, violence, and discrimination are among the many forms of expressions which can be found in people having homicidal thoughts or violent tendencies. It seems that we will never know, but one thing stands for sure. Manaz should spend the rest of his life in prison for the atrocious and unjust killings of his beautiful family. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Manaz Zaman. And why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.